Oh, yeah. Pichon, baby. Well, good day, folks, and welcome to part two of our beginner's guide to soft plastic fishing. Um, hope you enjoyed part one and got something uh, out of part one. Um, as I said in that video, I'm no expert in soft plastics fishing, um, but I believe that's that's the equipment and the gear that could get you catching a lot of um, species in estuaries and bays um, without blowing a massive budget. Um, in this video, part two, um, I'm going to be talking more on soft plastics, um, the different kinds of soft plastics and when you might use them. And I'm going to be talking how to tie um, your braid to your leader and how I tie it. There's lots of different ways to tie it. I just use a double uni knot. Um, a lot of people use FG knot. Um, Whereas I've always used double uni because I found it the easiest knot to learn and I can tie it on the boat if um, if it's windy and uh, low light conditions as well. So I use a double uni knot. It's a great knot to learn with, uh, the basic knot. And uh, there's plenty of other videos on different knots. There's a Slim Beauty. Um, so there's the FG knot and there's an All Bright knot, which are all great knots and you can go about in your own time to learn how to do those. So I'm going to grab some gear and then I'm going to um, go through how I tie my leader to my braid line and using the double uni knot. Okay folks, so now I'm going to show you how to tie your braid line, your main line, to your fluorocarbon leader. So I'm going to go through two knots. Um, the first one I believe is the most simple knot and probably the best to start with. This is called the double uni knot. And then the second knot is called a slim beauty, which I've never tied before ever. And it's meant to be fairly simple. So I'm gonna try that on camera, uh, just so as you can see how simple it is. I'm not the best with my fingers, so bear with me. <laughs> so this is a braided line. So that's the tag end, and this is our fluorocarbon line. I like to start with the braid in my left hand, fluorocarbon in my right hand. So what we do is overlap the two lines by quite a lot. Pinch both lines together. Form a loop, which creates a number six effect. And then pinch both the lines three lines together and then wrap the tag end through the loop crossing over the, the lines at the top. Now this is a six pound braid and a 10 pound leader. So I'm gonna do that six to seven times. And when we've gone through six to seven times, we've got that loop, you pull on the tag end That forms like a figure of eight. Don't need to pull it down too tight. Now we've got the fluorocarbon tag end side. So same again. Pinch the lines. Form the, the loop with the number six. Through the loop, crossing over both lines at the top. Same thing, cinch it down. Now, you've got your one knot from your braid side and one knot from your fluorocarbon. Now, we put saliva on the knots and in the line in between. Now, simply just pull the rest of the fluorocarbon leader and the braid and the knots will pull together. And then you'll see them cinch up tight. So that 
to the nut right there. Now, at this point, give it a decent pull. Obviously, if you're using light line, don't pull too tight. Give it a good pull. And we've got one job left to do. We get our scissors. And we just cut off the two tag ends. So the fluorocarbon, you need to cut it fairly close. Just so as it doesn't catch on the line, on the line rings, the guide rings as it's going through the rod. The braid's a little bit more supple. So I like to cut it fairly close, but not. it doesn't really matter if you get it too close. And there we have probably the easiest knot, which is still fairly strong, the double uni knot. So that's what I would start with. Okay, so the next knot we're going to have a go at, and I've never done this knot before, is the Slim Beauty. So take our leader, fluorocarbon leader, do a double overhand, a granny knot, so go under twice, and then pull it until forms a figure of eight with the boat with the cup as it would be on a boat sticking up the hull so you want it figure of eight like a little boat when we figured out what that's going to be we take the one loop So you got it like that, so it's come up through the one loop and then down <clears throat> through the other loop. Pull that out. And then pinch the knot and the line and then the tag end of the braid. We're going to wrap it around. One, two, Three, three, four, five. And then we go back on itself. One, two, three. And then the tag. Goes through the loop before the knot, before the figure of eight. Bit of saliva. And then we'll see if we can pull it down. There, it's tightened up. There we have it. Tightened up a treat. So give it a really good pull. That actually feels fairly, fairly uh, like a strong knot. And the braid end, fairly close. The fluorocarbon end, you want to get that one real close because it'll uh, catch on your guides. So there we go, that's the Slim Beauty, never tied that before, and good nut. So it just shows, and this is with 6 pound and 10 pound, so if you practice with some thick line, um, you'd really, uh, this would be an easy nut to uh, learn on, I'd imagine. So. There it is, that's the uh, Slim Beauty. You can Google, uh, you can YouTube that one as well. Paul Wersling uh, show you how to do it from iFish, so that's a really good nut. So there's your two nuts. Um, as I said, for leader length, seven to 12 foot, um, I know I normally like to go a longer leader just so as I'm not having to retie if I get uh, bit off or busted off or roughed up by flathead, I can just tie another jig on and I've still got a long length of leader.
All right, on to the next bit. So now we have tied our braid to our fluorocarbon leader using a double uni knot. Now we're going to put a jig head onto the end of the fluorocarbon. So what we do is push the line through the eye on the jig head, double it back on itself, and I'm going to do a single uni knot. So I'm going to pinch the line, same thing, number six, and feed the tag end through the loop. Four or five times. This is 10 pound leader. Okay, so that's what we've got again. Pull, saliva, and then cinch that knot up. So you pull it down and you'll see it'll just tighten on itself. That's as strong as you like. Same thing with the tag end. You can give it a little, allow it a little bit on this in case it slips. Just cut that off. And there you go. Strong. So that's our jig head tied onto our leader material. Okay, so now I have a soft plastic. This, I've got my jig head tied to my leader. This size jig head, I'd be predominantly fishing for uh, flathead. So this is a quarter ounce uh, 3.0 jig head. So on that, I'd use three to four to five inch soft plastics. This is a Munro's paddle tail because it's got a paddle on the end of the tail. With paddle tails, it's traditional that the paddle points down and the hook will come out of the top of the plastic, just like that. So the paddle down, hook up. Engage it like that. So as you know, roughly like there is where my soft plastic, the hook needs to come out of the center of the soft plastic. You can even put a little mark just with a hook point. So I'm gonna go in. and out through the center of the soft plastic. So you want it on nice and straight. So you don't want it all bunched up and kinked up. You want it as straight as you can get it. With the paddle, the hook point sticking up the top, out the top, and the paddle pointing downwards. And that's how you rig up a soft plastic. And that goes for any paddle tail soft plastic on any size jig head and curly tail grubs um, I found that it doesn't really matter if the curl tail goes up or down um, you still get fish and as many bites that way so with those uh, it doesn't really matter but that's how you rig a paddle tail soft plastic no matter what the size okay on to the next part so let's talk about soft plastics and jig heads so as you can see, there's a lot of brands and manufacturers of soft plastics. Um, these are only a few. These are a few that I've used and I know work a treat. Um, so we've got Munro's Soft Plastics, Australian made company, Low Tide Lures, which are an Australian made company, more Munro's there. You've got Z-Man, which is a US company. They do make uh, really good plastics. Uh, we've got Squidgy, we've got Savage Gear, Savage Gear is a US company, Squidgy I believe are Australian, and Gulp which is Berkeley which is a US company, and then we've got Savage Gear and Zerich, uh, I think Zerich's European, maybe Swedish, something like that, and yeah Savage Gear US. Um, so soft plastics from everywhere, uh, in this current time I with the coronavirus going on and Australia is going to need to do a lot of building, um, I'm going to be sticking to my 
uh, Australian made uh, soft plastic. So we've got the Munro's, the Low Tide and Oslo's as well, uh, also make soft plastics. Um, if there's any other Australian made soft plastic companies out there, chuck us a comment and I'll probably do a video um, just shouting out all the companies uh, and I'll use, use the soft plastic, see what I think and then I might do a video where we put all the Australian made soft plastics um, uh, in a video so people know what's out there and where to order and things like that so shoot us a message in the comments for that. Um, it'd be great to support Australian made companies um, and get these uh, businesses back on track after probably you know a couple of months of um, not doing so good so uh, support Australian businesses where you can. So just going to run through um, some of the soft plastics as we've got at the front and then some of the jig head sizes here. So all of these soft plastics will catch all of the species so you've got your grub tails, cow tails, paddle tails in your small and your larger paddle tails, uh, ribbon tail and this is a creature bait style bait. So all of these, these will catch flathead, brim, snapper, probably mulloway. These will catch brim, snapper, flathead, estuary perch. All of them will catch the same thing. Um, you just have to try and figure out what the fish want on, on the day. You know, one day they might want a, a ribbon, a uh, grub with that curl tail spinning around as it's coming back down. Sometimes they might want a more fish shape profile like the small slim swims there um, or minnow style baits and you know sometimes I might want something a little bit bigger on the ribbon tail with the fish shaped body see that's got more of a, a, of a fish profile than the grubs so they might want that and then your creature bait which doesn't really replicate anything um, more of like a bug or a nymph or something like that that might work on the day um, so all of these soft plastics will catch flathead Brim, snapper, tailor, estuary perch, ludric I've caught on the green colours. Um, any estuary species and small bay fish, uh, snook, I've caught snook on all of those as well, out in the bay at Port Phillip. Um, so, I mean, it makes it easy because you know that, you know, this size, soft plastics, pretty much going to work on any fish that you, that you can catch. So, the time that I would go up to my bigger, my three seven fives and my three inch, is when I'm specifically targeting the bigger fish. So the bigger pinkies in the bay or bigger flathead. Um, I mean, you can still catch flathead on the smaller lures, but you know, if you want to try and upsize, uh, if you're catching loads of small flathead, 25, 30 centimeters on the small plastic, you might put a four inch plastic and you upgrade to 40 to 50 centimeters off uh, flathead. But it might not work, you might end up going back down to the smaller plastic just to have a bit of fun. Um, so I'll just go through some of the plastics with you. So low tide lures, you can find these on Instagram and Facebook. Um, yeah, very well. I mean that's, you know, when the prawns are running, the shrimp are running. That's a uh, cracking little bait there little curl tail with a kind of a fish profile body um, yeah really good I've used these caught a heap of pinkies a few weeks ago on Port Phillip Bay with them they make low tide they do all kinds big paddle tiles small paddle tiles nymphs grubs everything so I jump on the website same with Munro's they make everything um, I've used their um, 2.75 inch paddle tail soft plastics recently as a video um, my most recent Port Phillip Bay video uh, that shows me using them and catching pinkies uh, decent pinkies as well and um, flattered later on um, Z-Man so Munro is Australia made uh, really good plastics Z-Man US company been around probably one of the longest I'd imagine and probably one of the most used soft plastics. Um, they're made from something called elastic, so they stretch without breaking really well. Um, they've got the elastic, so they are tough, but you need to store them right. So you need to put them, don't leave them in the sun. 
keep them in a binder in the shade otherwise you'll find that they'll start to melt and they'll all stick together and your motor oil and your midnight oil so there's this color don't put them in with any other soft plastics because they will uh, blend together and discolor all your other soft cast plastics and go really soft and mushy so don't know what's in them but yeah that's what it does and we've got your squidgy I think these are Australian made just have a look designed in Australia so probably manufactured overseas I'd imagine but they are designed in Australia that's your squidgy and they're a little these are their paddle tiles I really like paddle tiles for most of my species so that's a little fish profile paddle tile that's your black and gold color but you know all of these companies they make uh, a, a great variety of uh, your plastics, your grubs, your paddle tails, your curl tails, your creature baits uh, and everything in between. So, so your gulp, these are Berkeley product. So you've got worms and prawn. So these are um, packaged with a heavy scent, it's a liquid. So be careful when you're storing them, make sure you zip them up tight. Now, these are like a bait cross soft plastics. They're very soft. Um, I don't use these all the time, but if it's really tough, I might try one because they're heavily scented. They're soaked in liquid all the way through, but they do rip. So you might get one or two fish and then you have to replace it, but they stink. They replicate bait very well. And um, yeah, if you're struggling, try Berkeley Gulp. So I normally have a couple of packets of those just in case it's really tough and that's the shrimp pattern as well as a jigger in there and they do uh, minnows and all different kinds as well so you can also buy soft plastics rigged so these are rigged with your weight in your jig head that's a that's a 10 gram that's a Zerich flat shad in 3.5 inch so that's a soft plastic So paddle tail, plastic. So you can see the weights on the front there. So that's weedless. So what happens is the hook is there and it sits inside the body. So if you're fishing weedy areas, you know, you've got patches of sand and weed and you're targeting, say, flathead with this lure, 3.5 inch really good so you're not going to get snagged up on on uh on weed all the time so that's when i'd use weedless if i'm targeting probably shallow or weedy drop-offs uh, where there's patchy sand and weed and i'm getting snagged up with the normal rig i'll throw one of these on and try these instead so i believe that's a 10 gram weight with a 30 hook on a three and a half inch soft plastic and the good thing about these uh, is when all the plastic rips, you can uh, reuse these jig heads with these minnows. I'll fit perfectly on them, or the Monroe's paddle tail will fit perfectly on them as well. And I've caught fish on all of them. Another one for weedless or rocky areas. And a different profile altogether. So this is a Savage Gear 3D shrimp. How cool does that look? So same thing. Plastic sits up in the body. You've got that towel with the uh, with the slits. Gives it a really good action. Yellow eyes. And that's another weedless option there or rocky. If you've got rocky or weed, you can fish or snags, you know, thrown into uh, overhanging trees, things like that. That's perfect. That covers us on our basic soft plastics that we're going to need and I can't stress enough that you know all of these will catch every species that we're uh, chasing in the estuary or the uh, shallow bay fishing. Okay so now onto jig heads. Um, jig heads come in various weights and hook sizes as you can see there.
So this will depend on what fish you're targeting, the size and the depth of water and the amount of flow that you've got on the water from tides and currents etc. So I'm just going to run over a few that I use and what species and where I would use them. This is a quarter ounce, sorry this is a three eighth jig head. So that's the weight, is three eighth of an ounce. And the hook is a three O hook with a heavy gauge. So it's got the heavy, the thick hook. And I would use these predominantly when I'm targeting flathead or snapper in deeper water. Flathead, I would use them in shallow water as well. Um, anything from a couple of meters because I like it when it digs into the sand and flathead are an ambush predator. They'll lie in the sand and then when bait fish come off ledges and weed edges, they'll come up and smack them. So I believe having the heavier weight for flathead, I normally go a quarter or ounce a quarter ounce uh, with uh, three to four inch soft plastics and a three eighth if I'm going up to your five, six inch soft plastics. So this will get down hitting the bottom of the, the uh, bed and it'll really wake up the flathead uh, and make sure that they know that that's uh, in their area. So that's why I love that. Um, and for deeper water, um, you know, you can go half ounce if you're fishing fairly deep water for snapper in Port Phillip Bay. Now, they're the kind of plastics I'd run with those. That's a three inch Z-Man Minnows and a 3.75 inch Munro's Paddle Tail. So they're the kind of things I'd be targeting bigger fish if I'm targeting larger flathead Larger snapper, they're the kind of soft plastics I'd be using. Okay, so let's go on to your brim, more of your brim plastics, but we'll catch flathead and all other species. So for brim in winter, I was using a size two light. So it's a size two hook with a light gauge on a one eighth size weighted jig head. Now, this was because I was fishing in an estuary that was four to nine meters deep. So if you go too light, a 120th, a 116th, it'll take forever to get your soft plastic down to where the fish are. And in winter, predominantly, they're on the bottom, feeding on the bottom and schooling up on the bottom. So you have to try and judge it. So as you get a weight, doesn't sink too quickly. You want it, as you're hopping, it's got a nice flutter back down to the bottom, but isn't gonna to take too long to get there on the cast. So this takes a little bit of practice and figuring out what's best um, for the conditions you've got. But for winter, the one eighth in the area we were fishing with four to nine meters was perfect. And we were teaming that up with your grubs, this is a Munro soft plastic two inch grub, 2.5 inch grub. And also Z-Man Slim Swims, 2.5 inch, which is a fish profile in case they want something different. And Munro soft plastic, 2.75 inch paddle tails as well. So, that's perfect, I'll rig it up. So that's it on the jig. As you can see, whoop, as you can see, a very small amount of, of hook sticking out. Very finesse for the brim, because brim are very, uh, they can be very shy. Sometimes I feed ferociously and quite heavily, uh, but they can also fish very timid as well and be pecking at things so you want to try and keep things very finesse with brim. If I was fishing Bem River which is a lot shallower in the main lake um, 
from 1.5 meters to probably 2.5 meters is your deepest. I'd be fishing a 1 16th. So you can see there your weight difference from your 1 8th to your 1 16th is a great deal less. Half. So you know, if you're fishing shallower water, obviously you don't need to get it down as quick because there's not as much water there. You're only two meters. So this will give you a very slow fall. And when you hop it or slow retrieve it, it'll give you a very slow retrieve. Um, if you're <clears throat> slow retrieving this in two meters, it's gonna be, you're gonna have to wind faster to keep that just ticking along the bottom because it's heavier it'll want to go down and dig in which could be good on some days whereas this one you'd have to be able to wind really slow and it'll just flutter flutter it you know a foot off the bottom and also if you're doing the hopping method which you're hopping your plastic which I'll go through this will give a really nice slow fall and you know as these are falling back down these tails are spinning around and these paddle tails are really paddling and vibing so they're still working even when you're not rolling or hopping and another I probably wouldn't start off with these this is a size 2 hook on a it's what's called a hidden weight jig head I'll rig that so that's it on a grub your hidden weight on a grub and where I'd use those is so these come in different weights as well. This is a 1 16th, so on the heavier side, you know, you get 120, 126th. Um, is when you want to throw at um, platforms, pylons, and boat holes for brim that are hanging up in the water. And you want this, this will fall uh, sideways, nice and level, not forward because the weight's not on the front and this will fall really slow and get right into the brim's face while they're sitting up under pontoons and boats and things like that. So that's where the hidden weight comes in and obviously you assess and figure out what jig head weight you need on, on the day. So I'll always have a variety of sizes. But for brim, I'd go a size two and one hook. So you can see there, just the amount of jig heads I have all different sizes, all different weights, all different hooks. Um, so if I want, say, to run that, you know, with that, you could probably fish a 2 over for flathead. I'd imagine these would be pretty good. You know, that'd be perfect, I reckon. I'll have to give them a go. There you go, that's your ribbon tail by Low Tide Lures. Fish profile body with a beautiful big ribbon tail, so in motor oil colour. Or equivalent to motor oil colour. Beautiful. Work for Flathead. So yeah, you just get yourself a few jig heads to start off with. I would go 1 8 one sixteenth, one twelfth, one twentieth, and a mixture of the hidden weight you get from one thirtieth to one sixteenth in size two hooks and size one hooks. So that's what I'd cover for your brim and your small pinkies and things like that. And flathead, if you're running that size, soft plastic. That's a two and a half inch grub. So perfect for those. And also your two and a half inch creature baits. That's what I'd be, I'd be getting a good selection of those in size one and two hooks and all those different weights. For your Bigger flathead plastics, bigger pinky plastics, I'd be getting 
and you and now your ribbons I'd be getting a selection of a quarter ounce no, and one sixth of an ounce as well um, that will cover you for and with the hook size I'd probably go 1 0 2 0 and 3 0 and that will cover you for all your various larger plastics for targeting your bigger species like bigger flathead and bigger snapper so that's about it so methods I'll go through methods in a second and um, keep it simple I like to keep everything simple um, I generally do a single hop method I might vary the height of the hop or the aggressiveness of the flick um, I might do a slow roll which is just a slow wind of the reel so the plastics running across the bottom or close to the bottom um, or I might do a double hop so I'll talk to you a little bit more about them and then I'll do a video and uh, show you some video and put some narrative over it and we can talk through the different techniques fish that bay and then we can come back over this side and then we can fish over that bay yeah, it's all sweeping down around here, right? Yeah. There you go. Right at the boat there, yeah? Oh, no, a bit further out. Ten pan, he ain't breaking ten pan. Fish on. Beautiful. Right down there on the weed edge. Magic. Yeah, everything's coming out of that little lake. Like, mm. I'll have to go far to get a clean year. God, they go, they go all right. That's insane. It's perfect now, though. Wind's going that way. That was perfect eating size. That's fish. a great size. <coughs> it's hard to see the line at the moment, so just got the reflection of the sky. Trying to keep my line as tight as possible and feel. Like that. And out wide. The head shakes of a, of a brim. Oh. Is that mid 30s, I reckon? Oh, he's a good one. For the old look right on the side. <laughs> Good start. Z man, slim swim, midnight oil on a Berkeley Nitro dam deep jig head. Cop that. Fat. Alright, folks, well, I hope you've enjoyed those videos. There we go, that's part two. I hope you've enjoyed it and you've got something from it. Um, everyone does things differently, so I'm not saying my way is the correct way, you'll find your own little ways of doing things and there's plenty of videos from other people but this is a one-stop shop of how to get you with the right gear for a budget and 
hopefully doing the right thing with your soft plastics. So in the next video, I'm gonna go through Google Earth, um, how, do you, how I would approach a system uh, for the species that I'm gonna go for. So we'll do that. And, and then on the final video, I will head out and show you, put everything together and show you hopefully catching a few fish. So hope you've enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe. Um, any questions on anything, the previous video, or this video, leave comments, I'll answer them um, the best I can. Um, and if not, I'll try and find out from somebody else. So thanks again. Please like and subscribe, tight lines. I'll catch you on the next video.